as Pastor Bain said, Chief of Staff, and I'll be trying to direct the ceremonies today, uh, try to keep everything running smoothly. Obviously, with technology, you can never be entirely sure. So with your hearts full of Valentine's Day, you know, please bear with us. Um, today is part of a dream that Pastor Baines and his wife, Cheryl, first dreamed over 20 years ago. They dreamed of an East Palo Alto community where everyone could be healthy, housed, housed and employed in great jobs, where second chances were there for the haves and the have-nots, where all of us can do so much more than one of us. And that dream put Pastor Paul and Cheryl on a journey, and today is one of the milestones along that journey. Today, we gather to settle two deserving unhoused families into beautiful, affordable housing. We're so pleased that you have taken time to be with us today, whether virtually or as a drop-by at the site. We have a number of friends and supporters who are going to speak before we crack the proverbial champagne on the prows of these two Indie Dwell homes and launch them into service. And I'll be your host along the way. And with that, let me turn it over to Pastor Paul Baines and Cheryl, whose faith and vision have brought us all here today for some opening remarks. Pastor Paul, over to you. And thank you all for coming out here. Uh, my lovely wife's coming up here right now, back up here. <laughs> um, when we first started um, We Hope, uh, we had a vision of helping the marginalized um, in education and homelessness and my wife, she just loves children. Um, and so we created, we hope, uh, back in 1999, um, started off with working with the school districts, um, dealing with the truancy program, a program called STAND, which was students taking a new direction, uh, and then violence prevention. And so we started the chaplaincy with the East Palo Alto Police Department, and then grew with Mountain View and Palo Alto and even Menlo Park. Um, so I'm going to have my, my wife just, just say why she was so passionate about wanting to make a difference in the community. Just a few seconds. Thank you, husband. Um, obviously, I grew up, not to you, obviously, but I grew up uh, around my parents who were always active in the community and knowing, teaching me that we could always make a difference in someone's life. And so I never thought that it was something that was odd or something that I had to be coerced into doing. It was a part of life, helping others, making a difference in people's lives, uh, asking and, 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 and supporting people and what they're doing. And so it's always been something that is a part of me. And even before I met my husband, I was on jobs and when I was supposed to be doing work, I'm sitting down writing the things that I wanted this, this um, this uh, business to be when we finally, when I finally got with someone who was gonna help make it work as well. So it was something that I believe God put in my heart and he has taken all these years to keep growing it, keep growing it. And we just thankful to him for what he has done. So we hope stands for, we help other people excel. We don't care where people come from. We just wanna help them on the trajectory to get where uh, they can be as successful to tell me move this up to be as successful um that is predestined for them to be so at this time um i just want to give you the connection between we hope and why we started and founded uhb which stands for united hope builders uh, we sit on a lot of different boards in the bay area that do great work and uh housing um however we saw that maybe there's an opportunity to do even better work and so that's why uh, we created this new organization, United Hope Builders, which is an extension of We Hope. Um, and that is to address the housing crisis. If you want to disrupt generational poverty, you do that in, my, in our book with two areas, which is one, education, and two, housing. Um, we know that redlining kept a lot of people out of obtaining that American dream. And so we want to make that American dream within reach. That being said, we're not going to bore you. We're a little bit behind time. I'm going to give you back in the hands of our MC, Michael Brownwick, who is our chief of staff. Thank you, Pastor. You know, one of the reasons we believe so deeply in this mission and our ability to succeed with this factory in East Palo Alto uh, is because Pastor Baines has built that record of success at We Hope. And that record was a result of his vision, but married to the execution of a number of crucial contributors, volunteers, and thought leaders along the way. As the African expression puts it so well, to go fast, we should travel alone. 
but to go far, we must travel together. One of our key leaders, a fellow traveler, if you will, is the chairman of We Hope, Mr. Jonathan Bunce, a highly successful executive at Intervision by day and by night, a Cape do-gooder for We Hope. So over to Jonathan. Hey, what a celebration. This is a celebration of a very key milestone. And I'd say this is a milestone of just the tip of the iceberg. You know, and we're here to celebrate Pastor Paul, Cheryl, their family, their vision, uh, which they shared with everybody. So it's so exciting to be here. But this doesn't happen alone. They can't do this by themselves. There's a lot of dignitaries. There's a lot of investors. There's partnerships. There's volunteers. There's staff. There's staff that come here and work for significantly probably less than what they can make in the commercial market. But their passion and heart is here. So we want to thank everybody that has volunteered to be in here, these investors and dignitaries, because it's the only way this happens. Now I'm going to double click. I want to share a little bit about the connection of We Hope and United Home Builders and how this kind of all comes together, just real quick. But the first thing is you have to understand the why. You don't dive right into the what and the how if you don't understand the why. The why is in 2016, homelessness was considered an epidemic. 2019, 258,000 people, families, individuals, racial, et different ethnicities, 258,000 people. So the why is we're addressing an epidemic. That's the why. Now the what you heard, Pastor talked a little bit about some of the stats, the economics, etc. What I wanted to focus on is chairman of the board of We Hope, what we drive, you hear about healthy, employed, homeless, they're in house. But let's talk about the first two, the healthy and employed, because there's a lot of work that goes behind that. And I'll, I'll tell you why I bring this up. With the healthy, it, the bare necessities of food and shelter, that's what everybody needs. But we go beyond that to get employed Sometimes there's got to be case management. We need to help people along in their journey of life. This becomes a life cycle. So the case management that goes in, it might, it might be anger management. It might be basic financials. You know, we have to prepare these people. We want to prepare them to get to that next chapter, which is right behind me here, what you're all facing and looking at. So that's the what. Now, how do we do this? Is the board of We Hope, you think it's right in front of you, but the skill that's necessary to do this. The skill, though, is this. And this is what we Cheryl all the time in the board meetings on. The skill is partnerships. It's building strategic alliances. You're looking at, once again, the dignitaries. We have to work with the councils. We have to have scalable relationships with them. We have to have scalable relationships with investors. We have to have scalable relationships with volunteers, with staff, and that's how we do it. That's the ecosystem that builds this life cycle journey for people that we can take from a, a certain place and get them back into society and give them that hope. That's what we're here for. And our challenge is we're going to grow. Like I said, this is the tip of the iceberg. We challenge we want to grow four or five X in the next three years, but not one of those can be done alone. We need all the dignitaries, we need all the investors, we need all the volunteers, we need all the staff to all rise together in order to hit this plateau and give this gift back of hope to people. So once again, I wanna say thank you to everybody here that's made this happen. It's a joyous time, it's a celebration, it's a key milestone, and we're just at the beginning of the journey. Thank you. First of all, I should say that I do want to thank, as Jonathan mentioned, the number of dignitaries who are here with us. I can't call everyone out by name because I can't see the list, but I know you're there and it means so much to all of us. Uh, we all are in this together, um, whether we're electeds or business people or nonprofit. Um, as Pastor Baines began developing the business plan for opening up San Mateo County's first affordable housing factory, he knew he needed not just capital, but smart capital and values aligned capital. 
So he turned to Mark Zuckerberg and Priscilla Chan and the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. And I'm so happy to tell you that thanks to CZI, United Hope Builders has received a grant to pay for all the equipment that will go inside the factory to build our modular dwellings. Just amazing. And we're honored to have Priscilla Chan with us today to share her thoughts on housing, on racial equity, and how we all must pull together so that we can all pull ahead. Uh, Priscilla, I hope that you have gotten online at this point. Um, let's see. There we are. <laughs> it worked. Um, happy Valentine's Day, everyone, and what a celebration. What a better way. Couldn't think of a better way to show um, a community how much you love um, each other. Um, so uh, I, I can be very brief. I'll tell you a little bit about the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. Um, we're five years old, just like our daughter, Max, who turned five. And um, I have to say that in the past five years, we have gone, we have stressed over every single detail, tried to figure out what, what are the big problems, what are the little problems, and we have been uh, found ourselves dedicated to facing, helping tackle issues that challenge um, our communities, especially our communities of color, because those long, we cannot build a better future for everyone unless we commit to addressing those long-standing inequities that are caused by systemic racism that continue to cause hardships um, and have only been highlighted by the current global pandemic. Um, coronavirus and the pandemic is really challenging. And uh, I don't know if it's the worst part of it or the silver lining is that no one can look away from the dramatic inequities that um, the coronavirus highlights and um, housing is one of them. But at the same time, we're not, I, the pandemic has highlighted at least for me, how important community is, how important that we actually reach out to one another and connect in little ways and in big ways. And more than anything that I have learned from Pastor Baines is that Pastor Baines sees us, sees you and believes in community. Um, and so as we've um, made our journey in the past five years, we've invested in scientific innovation, criminal justice reform. And um, what I'm here to talk about today is housing and housing affordability in California. We are committed to um, thinking about how do we invest in the systems that actually help people um, help uh, serve each other and be able to build a better future for themselves and their family. And um, we have to make it easier. We can't build one-off solutions. And we need to be thinking systematically, how can we bring more housing online and how do we make it more affordable? Um, and that's why we're so excited for the, for the launch today, um, for We Hope, for the United Hope Builders, for IndieDwell, to be able to support one of the country's leading modular housing factories that is so mission aligned to build housing affordably and quickly, that's huge. Um, and so we are excited to be able to partner with Pastor Baines and um, the community that we love, the Bay Area, to actually make housing affordable, ubiquitous, especially and most importantly for communities of color. Um, we love bringing together unlikely coalitions. Um, we find that um, at the end of the day, building a better future is, um, is something that everyone wants. And one example is last year, we invited Pastor Baines to visit us at CZI. And we brought together um, a former Republican Speaker of the House in Oklahoma with a, one of our program ma managers, Ali Tambora, who is a formerly incarcerated individual who is now an incredibly powerful advocate. And they were sort of convinced that they just had different views on the world when they first met each other. But after they really talked about what really mattered, 
Um, Elise said, he felt like my soul was glowing. And it, I think that's the power of bringing together people from all different parts of a community together to solve a problem. Unlikely partnerships can open up incredible opportunities. Um, and I like to think that th this group here and all everyone participating is all the critical people across our community coming together to solve an incredibly important problem. And so um, I'm, I'm thrilled for what Pastor Baines is launching today. And I just love, um, love United Hope Builders ideas. We, we have to bring hope home. We have to build a better future for everyone. So I'm so thrilled. It looks beautiful. Um, and let's, especially through this time, hold on to the power of hope. Thank you, Priscilla. That that was wonderful. You know, um, what we've become today, what Silicon Valley is today, one of the most influential and important regions in the world is thanks, as we know, to creative and bold entrepreneurs. But where we're going as a community and as a society will be determined by people like Priscilla. So thank you very much for your leadership. Uh, our next three speakers are all public officials and they represent what's best about leadership in San Mateo and Santa Clara counties. Our first civic guest is someone who's been helping his local community in East Palo Alto since being elected to the council in 2008, but actually even earlier than that, since he was a young Stanford student and he worked on getting East Palo Alto incorporated into its own independent city. Uh, I, it's my great pleasure to introduce my friend, Mayor Carlos Romero, who understands housing and who understands racial equity in a deeper way than most because he's worked in housing finance and he has served always from the heart to bring all members in our cities into one community, no matter what their backgrounds, what their parents, where they came from. And so it's our honor to welcome Mayor Romero to speak. Car hey, what a celebration. This is a celebration of a very key milestone. And I'd say this is a milestone of just the tip of the iceberg, you know? And we're here to celebrate Pastor Paul, Cheryl, their family, their vision, uh, which they shared with everybody. So it's so exciting to be here, but this doesn't happen alone. They can't do this by themselves. There's a lot of dignitaries. There's a lot of investors, there's partnerships. There's volunteers, there's staff, there's staff that come here and work for significantly probably less than what they can make in the commercial market, but their passion and heart is here. So we want to thank everybody that has volunteered to be in here, these investors and dignitaries, because it's the only way this happens. Now I'm going to double click. I want to share a little bit about the connection of We Hope and United Home Builders and how this kind of all comes together, just real quick. But the first thing is you have to understand the why. You don't dive right into the what and the how if you don't understand the why. The why is in 2016, homelessness was considered an epidemic. 2019, 258,000 people, families, individuals, racial, different ethnicities, 258,000 people. So the why is we're addressing an epidemic. That's the why. Now the what you heard, Pastor talked a little bit about some of the stats, the economics, etc. What I wanted to focus on is Chairman of the Board of We Hope, what we drive, you hear about healthy, employed, homeless, and housed. But let's talk about the first two, the healthy and employed because there's a lot of work that goes behind that. And I'll, I'll tell you why I bring this up. With the healthy, it, the bare necessities of food and shelter, that's what everybody needs. But we go beyond that. To get employed, sometimes there's gotta be case management. We need to help people along in their journey of life. This becomes a life cycle. So the case management that goes in, it might, it might be anger management. It might be basic financials. You know, we have to prepare these people. We want to prepare them to get to that next chapter, which is right behind me here, what you're all facing and looking at. So that's the what. Now, how do we do this? As the board of WeHope, 
you think it's right in front of you, but the skill that's necessary to do this. The skill, though, is this. And this is what we Cheryl all the time in the board meetings on. The skill is partnerships. It's building strategic alliances. You're looking at, once again, the dignitaries. We have to work with the councils. We have to have scalable relationships with them. We have to have scalable relationships with investors. We have to have scalable relationships with volunteers, with staff. And that's how we do it. That's the ecosystem that builds this life cycle journey for people that we can take from a, a certain place and get them back into society and give them that hope. That's what we're here for. And our challenge is we're going to grow. Like I said, this is the tip of the iceberg. We challenge we want to grow four or five X in the next three years, but not one of those can be done alone. We need all the dignitaries. We need all the investors. We need all the volunteers. We need all the staff to all rise together in order to hit this plateau and give this gift back of hope to people. So once again, I want to say thank you to everybody here that's made this happen. It's a joyous time. It's a celebration. It's a key milestone. And we're just at the beginning of the journey. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Sorry you couldn't be here. Nice to see you. Um, I do want to just do a shout out to some of the officials that are in the uh, in the audience, certainly to our former mayor and now councilwoman Lisa Gaucher. I saw her in the back with her grandson, Cameron. Um, to Patrick Heisinger, our assistant city manager. And we're also graced uh, uh, by his wife, Jill Bourne, who is the director of all libraries in um, San Jose and has actually been working with our city to try to work with our educational and library issues. Um, there is an Arabic saying, no one feels the pain more than someone standing in the fire. Perhaps Pastor Baines has not stood in the fire, but he's been very close to it and clearly demonstrates that he understands and feels that pain. Ten years ago, when I was first mayor in the city of East Palo Alto, Pastor Baines and a group of other nonprofits came to the city and said they wanted to build some form of affordable transitional housing. At the time, Pastor Baines was working on his um, shelter, uh, warming shelter. And I gave them one of those, you know, bogus political lectures. <laughs> There's a 3C lecture. We need to see commitment, competence, and compassion. As Pastor Baines walked out of that room, he kept not muttering, but saying, competence, commitment, compassion. Competence, commitment, compassion. 10 years later, after this ministry of, allevi of alleviating poverty, moving then to the establishment of a functional and a well-functioning warming center that has received millions of dollars in donations, that has made a dent in some of the homeless issues we have in East Palo Alto, to working with us to establish this safe housing, safe parking program, which is the first of its kind on the peninsula and in San Mateo, that both Pastor Baines put in some of his own money and we've at this point put into, to put, put into this project over a million dollars. Now we have a modular proof of concept project here, which is the next step that moves us that much farther into the realm of competence and commitment. East Palo Alto, as you may all know, has been innovative and nimble throughout its last 30 year, 30, I guess that would be 38 years. Uh, it's the only way we could be in existence today. We've established well over 500 affordable de housing develop housing units. We have 385 that we are building right now. That means I have 30 seconds left. Um, and I do want to say that we are partners with We Hope. We need to figure out how we can scale projects of this nature. And I will end by saying that as Edmund Burke, the famous 18th century Irish philosopher said, all government is compromise and barter. That is to say, all government, indeed, every human benefit and enjoyment, every virtue, every prudent act, is founded on compromise and barter between community and government. We will walk forward today together and figure out how indeed we scale a project like this in East Palo Alto.
Thank you very much for your support. Thanks to Pastor Baines. Thanks to everyone who has worked closely with us in East Palo Alto to try to make East Palo Alto a more just place to live. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank you so much Carlos. And I know I speak for Pastor Baines that we couldn't do what we do without the uh, deep support of the city of East Palo Alto, its elected leaders, and its staff who are just top top of the heap. Um, it's me the great pleasure of introducing um, another one of my friends, and that is Assemblymember Mark Berman to the virtual podium, or perhaps it's the real podium in this case. Uh, so as we all know, I think, but I will repeat that Mark represents both Santa Clara and San Mateo counties. Uh, and, you know, uh, in Sacramento, and he does an amazing job at it. Uh, for many of Mark's colleagues in Sacramento, they look at our county and our region and they say, you don't need any help from Sacramento. You've got Google and Facebook and Apple and any number of other huge successful companies. Uh, but those legislators don't see past the headlines. They don't see the schools in Pescadero that don't have clean drinking water. They don't see our families, two families, three families in a one bedroom apartment. Uh, they don't see seven workers crammed into a house just to make ends meet. Um, and Mark Berman fights for our people, every one of them, every day in Sacramento. So thank you, Mark, for being here uh, today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for that kind introduction. And, and let me say you're absolutely right uh, about the challenge of representing an area uh, like Southern San Mateo County and Northern Santa Clara County in Sacramento is everyone thinks that the streets are paved with gold. Uh, but we know that they're not. We know that we have some of the biggest inequality right here uh, in our community uh, of anywhere in the world. Uh, and so it's my my pleasure and privilege to be here today. One of the things that we talk about in Sacramento more than anything is the, the housing crisis, the homelessness crisis. How can we build housing cheaper and how can we scale that up to more communities? And so it's so exciting to be here today uh, for the, the launch uh, and proving this concept uh, right here in, in East Palo Alto, right here in the 24th Assembly District. I just want to say I stand in admiration uh, of Pastor Baines and his wife, Cheryl, uh, for all that they have done for this community to help the disadvantaged. Uh, Pastor Baines and, and his wife, Cheryl, transcend the community of East Palo Alto. The, the organization that they founded 20 years ago, we hope, is now in 17 cities across the Bay Area, helping the unhoused and low-income residents stay healthy, employed, and housed. It's a remarkable record of accomplishment. And I've had the pleasure of meeting Pastor, or, uh, hanging out with Pastor Baines a lot. This is the first time I've met his better half. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited to meet you today and thank you for all the work that you've been doing. Uh, as we all know, Silicon Valley is full of innovators and risk takers, but I can't think of too many innovative risk-taking pastors. Based on what Pastor Baines and looking at what he plans to do with United Hope Builders, he is really raising the bar, and I hope others look to him for inspiration. Of course, it's no mystery to any of us that affordable housing is a crucial problem that we need to solve if we want to keep our Bay Area communities healthy, strong, and accommodating to all income levels, not just the very wealthy. Over the last 40 years across the United States, real hourly median wages have been absolutely flat while the real cost of rental and ownership housing over the same period has risen anywhere from 40 to 80%, and that's even worse here in the Bay Area. That's why so many folks have the feeling that they are falling, falling further and further behind every year. Too many of our families are unhoused, and many, many more are housing precarious. Too many families are just one unexpected medical bill or emergency expense away from not being able to pay the rent. These challenges existed before COVID, but the pandemic has significantly exacerbated them. We know from the data that even a short period of homelessness for a child can have devastating long-term impacts on education, productivity, and spiritual fulfillment. So we have to do more to build beautiful, affordable housing, and that is exactly what Pastor Baines and Cheryl have set out to do. We are here today to make two of these modular homes available to two hugely deserving families. But the big picture is to start making many more of these amazing modular homes available to many more of our residents and families who need some help with housing. Anyone involved in a startup understands there are risks. But based, based on Pastor Baines and Cheryl's record to date, I have faith that United Hope Builders will soon be another victory for Pastor Baines, for Cheryl, 
and for our collective efforts to make our communities more just, more equitable, and more vibrant for all. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much for those generous comments, Mark, and moving comments. Uh, our next speaker is somebody who is building um, our community from the nonprofit side and is so important and has been so helpful to Pastor Baines uh, and the entire We Hope team over the years. It's my great pleasure to introduce Nicole Taylor, the CEO of Silicon Valley Community Foundation. Most recently, Nicole was invited by Mayor Sam Licardo to join five other prominent co-chairs to help steer Silicon Valley away from the rocks of COVID. And Nicole is just like Priscilla Chan. She's not just the brains of the organization, she's the heart of the organization. And Silicon Valley Community Foundation exists for all of us. So thank you, Nicole, for being here. And I will turn the mic over to you. Oh, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. I really appreciate it, Michael. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm honored to be here today for this virtual ribbon cutting and housewarming celebration. Pastor, First Lady Cheryl Baines, the United Hope Builders team, the Indy Dwelly Dwell team, congratulations on your achievement today in launching these beautiful, affordable, and safe housing units for East Palo Alto residents. Your work takes us all one step closer toward a more inclusive and accessible Silicon Valley. Since February of last year, I can't believe it's been a year, the Community Foundation has been raising money to help people weather the COVID-19 crisis. Our COVID response since the very beginning was rooted in equity, focused on driving resources to those who already hit hardest by racial disparities and inequities. As we look to the future, this pursuit of equity must continue and we cannot return to what once was. We all know that racial and economic disparities in accessing safe and affordable housing existed long before the pandemic. To build an equitable future for everyone, we must bring relief, absolutely critical relief to residents most impacted by the housing crisis. The Community Foundation is doubling down on our efforts in the protection, preservation, and production of housing. We will engage partners to support housing in our region. We will catalyze investments in this area, supporting models like this that work towards affordable housing solutions. And we will work with our donors to lend their philanthropic resources to these opportunities. And we will use our voices to push for critical policy changes and opportunities. But most importantly, we will continue to give a greater voice to community organizations like Project Hope that have deep roots in the community who can help define the challenges, the obstacles, and the solutions that should drive our work to transform the region. For so many years, Pastor Reigns has poured his heart into the fight for justice and equity in East Palo Alto. You heard him say that, as did First Lady Cheryl Baines. And I remember when our team sat down with the pastor and the United Hope Builders team about uh, 18 months ago, to discuss this idea they were hatching. His advocacy and determination and that of their entire team are why we are here today, witnessing this model that takes us one step closer to solving our region's housing crisis. So in closing, we know that we must work together to reimagine and build back a better Silicon Valley and ensure that no one is left behind, both now and when we emerge from all of this. Silicon Valley, is the hub of the world-class innovation and ingenuity, and together we must, and I believe we will, harness that innovation and make progress toward equity and inclusive prosperity. Pastor Baines, First Lady Cheryl Baines, United Hope Builders team, Indeed Well team, your victories today are proof of that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nicole. Uh, I think this is the right time to be preaching and certainly the right environment, so thank you for preaching. Uh, we appreciate it, and we certainly believe very much in the message. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great to be here. I wanted to be a part of our um, event today. Fred Blackwell, the CEO of the San Francisco Foundation, has put together a short video message to salute this day. And I think with that, I'm going to hand it over to our amazing live stream expert, Cynthia Handler. Th Chandler, thank you so much for all the work you're doing behind the scenes, Cynthia. Uh, and I'm going to hand it over to you so that we can see Mr. Blackwell's video. 
Hi, my name is Fred Blackwell, Fred and I'm the CEO of the San Francisco Foundation, and I want to uh, thank uh, We Hope and the United Hope Builders for uh, inviting me to be a part of today's celebration and a huge uh, milestone. I'm apologetic that I can't be uh, with you in person and uh, live, but when I told my wife that I had an event to do on Valentine's Day, uh, she looked at me crazy, and I'm trying to stay married. Uh, so I really value being a part of this. Um, really just want to say, uh, one, that the San Francisco Foundation, uh, 25 years ago, uh, almost, uh, started its work uh, with the FACE program, then the FACE initiative, which was the Foundation Alliance with Interfaith to Heal Society, because we believe very uh, wholeheartedly that uh, faith-based institutions have a tremendously important role to play in community service, community development, community organizing, community transformation. Uh, and one of the early things that we did uh, with the FACE program was actually put together a program that was really about uh, popular education and demystifying economics for uh, faith-based institutions that really wanted to engage in kind of all aspects of community transformation. Uh, and it was through that process in our early days and working with uh, Pastor Baines and the church that um, they started to come together and really kind of think about what their uh, role could be in community development and housing development. And it was really, uh, I think, a privilege for us to be a part of some of the early conversations, early grant making uh, to make today possible. And we've been on a, a journey with uh, We Hope uh, and United Hope Builders uh, for a long time now with small grants, with trainings, with larger grants to help to build their capacity. And so uh, today is really an important milestone and we're really proud to be a part of that uh, journey. Uh, we all know uh, that housing uh, is an incredible part of community development and it's an incredible part of just being able to support families. And uh, we've known that in the past, all that have been, has been made uh, much clearer through the, the last year of uh, pandemic and health issues and economic issues that have been uh, associated with it. And we have long thought uh, and hoped that uh, faith-based institutions and churches and mosques and synagogues uh, could be a more uh, integrated part of the ecosystem uh, that is about uh, community development broadly and affordable housing development more specifically. Uh, we know that uh, there's no silver bullet for this, uh, that we need to be engaged in uh, strategies that protect tenants, that preserve existing affordable housing, and produce new housing at all levels of affordability. And we are very happy to see uh, We Hope, uh, United Hope Builders, and other members of the faith community engaged in this process. And it is really great to see, uh, after the incredible journey that we uh, have been on together, uh, to see United Hope Builders uh, at the stage uh, that it is at today and being able to uh, do all the things that are necessary to come together uh, to make these kinds of projects happen. Uh, so congratulations. Uh, and again, we're uh, very pleased to be a part, a small part of the journey. Gracious of him to share his, his thoughts and well wishes to United Hope Builders. And indeed, his advice to us along the way has been invaluable. So we are doubly grateful. Uh, we are closing in on the moment where the Valentine, the, that Valentine's Day moment where we hand over the keys to two uh, new neighbors of ours in new homes. Uh, but the fact is that dreams like this take resources. They don't just happen. Uh, wishing doesn't make it so. If it did, the last presidential administration would have lasted a lot less time than it did. Uh, no, dreams take work and they take resources and they take believers. And this project in particular, these two model homes in East Palo Alto uh, and United Hope Builders in general would not be here today if it were not for the support and the belief of Bill Urig and Anastasia Vornas. So with that, I'd like to invite Anastasia to join us at the podium for a few minutes. Hello, this is so exciting for me because ever since I met Pastor Baines, and he told me about a tip he had gotten from Priscilla Chen about Indeed Dwell, this company in Idaho that built these amazing houses. And he was concerned. He said, you know, I've looked at it, my team has looked at it, and we just can't figure it out. 
the only thing that worries me is it's too good to be true. <laughs> and I said, well, I love this idea and I want to go see it. Can you introduce me? Which he did. And I went home to Bill, who is an aeronautical engineer by training. So he's a good person to look at buildings and all kinds of things, even if they don't fly. And so we went together and we spent two days and we were dazzled and we walked away with the same thing. If this is real, this is huge. And the idea that it's a B Corp, that employees of the company have such things that many of us assume, like health insurance, like paid vacation, like profit sharing are possible for people who build these terribly important and valuable and durable and environmentally sound houses should have those benefits. So here we are. I went back to Pastor Baines and I said, I love it. And I'm tired of studies. I want to do testing. And so he said, I'm tired of all of it too. Let's do something. And so we did. And we um, made a little quiet partnership with Cheryl and, uh, and with Bill. And we uh, got to today with a lot of zigs and zags in the road and you know global issues and all the rest. But the point is we're here and the houses are great. And I can't wait for you all to come indoors and look at them and we want to do more. These buildings can be stacked into three to five, eight, whatever stories the local zoning permits. Elevators can be mounted from the outside and cut through the side so that they're accessible to all different populations because I love that. I like uh, supportive housing and low income housing and affordable housing to be like cities, which is we all live together close by one another and we like it that way. So I am thrilled to be here. I'm honored to be here. And uh, uh, this is my crowd. We can't wait to do lots more. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anastasia, uh, from everybody at We Hope and United Hope Builders. Um, and finally, our last guest speaker before I hand it back to Pastor Baines and the ribbon cutting um, is we want you to hear from the other half of the dream making team. So these are our partners and our colleagues at Indie Dwelt. Scott Flynn is one of the co-founders of Indie Dwelt, and he'll share with you the vision that Indie Dwelt brings to modular housing. And we hope we'll bring him here. Uh, later this year, opening up the first United Hope Builder Indie Dwell factory just down the street right here in East Palo Alto, providing, as Anastasia said, great jobs, great benefits, training and profit sharing with our workers. And let me underscore our local workers. Uh, in fact, we're already having success. We've already worked with the city of San Jose to put Indie Dwell units in a rapid rehousing deployment down there, housing 106 formerly homeless people in beautiful new Indie Dwell units. So a shout out here to the city of San Jose, Habitat for Humanity, and we hope for that partnership. Without any further ado, Scott, let me turn the microphone over to you and hear from Indie Dwell. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much, Michael. We are honored to be a part of such an impactful team of aligned leaders. My partner, Pete Gombert, and I founded Indie Dwell in 2016 with the vision of housing our country's most vulnerable citizens in healthy, durable, sustainable, and energy efficient homes, all while doing so with a business culture that encourages diversity, inclusion, and equity for all stakeholders. We felt, we felt that if we did not focus on these societal healing attributes, we would only be contributing to the systemic inequalities inherent in our nation's heritage, not helping to solve them. Therefore, our homes are consciously designed and constructed to provide mental, physical, and financial well being to those who both who build them and live in them. We believe that business can be utilized as a force for good and serve as a platform to heal our country's deepest inequality wounds. We demonstrate our commitments with our certified B Corporation status, which is the highest level 
of corporate social responsibility attainable. Certified B Corpors, corporations are businesses that meet the highest standards of verified social and environmental performance, public transparency, and legal accountability to balance profit and purpose. As a certified B Corporation, we are accelerating a global culture shift to redefine success in business and build a more inclusive and sustainable economy. To ensure that we stay true to our B Corporation status and our mission of delivering affordable housing as opposed to market rate housing, we align with like-minded leaders and partners such as Project We Hope, United Hope Builders, Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, and several other impactful partners. From the moment we first met Pastor Paul and Cheryl in Boise over two years ago, Pete and I knew we were in comforting arms and that the four of us shared the same vision of serving the most underserved with healthy, high quality housing. The selfless servant leadership demonstrated by the Baines is precisely the inspiration and dedication this country needs to reunite society again as one world and one race, the human race. We are excited to be working side by side with Project We Hope and United Hope Builders to construct our fourth fa factory in East Palo Alto. The employees of the new factory will earn a living wage, have full health, dental and vision benefits and build wealth through our profit sharing and equity programs all while supplying safe, stable, healthy, high-performance homes to local marginalized families. Thank you. For that two bedroom. And then this is a three bedroom unit uh, with a master bedroom and the approximate square feet is 960 square feet. And we're gonna do a little video tour with our great uh, photographer, Boris. Um, but we're gonna do a ribbon cutting right now. So I'm gonna ask my lovely wife um, to come and... We're gonna, we're gonna, the video camera's gonna have to follow us. And unfortunately we don't have a mic that uh, to go with that. So we're gonna go over here. We're gonna cut the, cut this ribbon right over here. My wife is going to have the honor of doing that with uh, Anastasia. They're going to... Yes. We're going to ask um, Mother Spicer. Mother Spicer is in our family. We're going to go right over there. All right. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank Mother you. Mother Spicer is um, just a beautiful uh, lady that came with us in our services, and um, we just want to honor you today um, for your faithfulness. Um, she she has been unhoused for some time, and she actually goes over to Haiti um, to help with the homeless over there and to help with the children in Haiti, even being an unhoused person. Well, Mother Spicer, on behalf of Bill and Anastasia, the city of East Palo Alto, and, and We Hope and United Hope Builders, we want you to cut this. Now, the goal was for her to move in here, but we got a different surprise for you. And she, and, and this is because of the great staff at We Hope. She was going to move into this brand new home, but because the staff got her permanent housing, she won't be moving in here. <laughs> Which is a great problem to have. Uh, Lapita and Christina Wolf, our case managers, have found you a permanent home. Um, oh and you will be going into that, even though this was made for you. Okay. And Dina did a whole big story on this thing um, yeah. around you, but we, we get to pivot it. So you... Um, and uh, get to come up here and cut that. And we want to come on, Mayor. Come on, Mayor. Come on, Come on, Mayor. 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 Come on, Mayor.
Anastasia's going to, you're going to hand her the keys to get in there. All right. Now on this key, it's as a key of a house and has United Hope Builders and we hope on it. So here, you, you're going to hand that key. Go ahead and lock it. Lock the door. <laughs> Wait, wait, huh? yeah. Ah. yeah, we'll do the one first. No, we weren't. Wow. All right, okay. well, we're here. Now. All right, <laughs> so we got to pivot. They're just doing some last minute changes in the house, <laughs> so we're gonna pivot and uh, we'll, we'll get a chat. All right, over here, we have another house. <laughs> All right, so now we can use the mic. Where's the pizza and Carlos? Carlos is in front of me. A pizza, a key, a key. Can we get the mic back up? There we go. All right, so in partnership with the city of East Palo Alto and Bill and Anastasia, um, this house was built. We have we have a family that has been um, a part of our program here in our RV safe parking program. And then uh, uh, Lapita's going to say it in Spanish because poquito español. And they have complied with all the requirements going to the financial literacy class and the various classes that we have to offer and so on and so forth. Now, these homes are temporary homes until we can get them housed. Hopefully, as quickly as we got Mother Spicer house, where she didn't even get a chance to get to live in the house. Um, and so, Lapita's going to come, and with our mayor, and we're going to have them cut the uh, not you cut the ribbons, but they're going to translate in Spanish first for our Spanish. In comparación con las personas que han Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> en cooperación las personas que han donado dinero a, a el proyecto a We Hope um, ustedes han calificado a través de todo el trabajo que han hecho tratando de, de mejorar su crédito y todo eso de este ser uh, los primeros en ocupar esta casa para ustedes entonces ustedes aquí pueden cortar el el, 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 el listón y tomar este posesión de esta casa. Bienvenidos a su casa. Welcome to your home. Córtale. Es para ustedes. Eso. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Ahorita le van a dar las llaves. Boy, uh, you own the room. Ya las perdimos. And we'll allow everyone to come in. We want to thank all the people. Come, 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 come. 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 Come